So in an upcoming tutorial, I'm putting dots all over my face so I can achieve this effect, which I know, very important, groundbreaking stuff, and I'm here today uh, to show you how to do that. CG cool. No, just kidding, it's me. So uh, let's talk about how to make that in Blender. Um, and usually I say, oh, I'm using version 2.92, use whatever version you want. Uh, no, uh, this time make sure you're in 2.93 or above because we're gonna need a certain add-on that comes shipped with Blender, but only a 2.93 after. You're gonna need it and it's actually very important. So assuming that uh, you're in Blender and you're good to go, uh, let's make the effect. Okay, first thing we need to do is we need to do our tracking. So I'm gonna assume you already filmed some footage. If you haven't, you can use my footage available on Patreon. You already know that. Um, okay, so we're gonna need some footage to use. I have a sequence of me doing whatever. I just turned it into an image sequence. You can just import it in as a video, whatever you want. Open the clip and now it's in the movie clip editor, which is perfect since this is where we uh, track it. Uh, the core idea here is we are gonna be tracking all these dots. So now we have that information. We're then gonna project that into 3D space where we're gonna have a mesh moving with our face and it's all, it's, and then the way that we turn it into that weird thing is via UV maps, long story short. But either way, uh, the beginning of that begins with uh, tracking. Um, so normally I recommend hit set scene frames, which is gonna give us the number of frames this is, etc. Um, in this case, I'm only gonna track the first 150 frames because the rest of it is just the same thing, but longer. So 150 frames, whatever. Click prefetch, it's now all loaded into memory. Final thing, color management, standard, and we're good to go. Um, so we don't have that much to track. Let's talk about how to do it. Uh, long story short, uh, these tracker settings, uh, here's what I would want to change before I start. I'm gonna enable normalize, so any tracker is now gonna be normalized. It's gonna be invariant to lighting changes. Uh, you could also make keyframe previous frame. That's actually something I recommend, but I don't think it's actually gonna be necessary. So control click uh, to add in a tracker, alt S to look at the thing. Eh, looks good enough, track forwards. Okay, cool. Um, this is very helpful if when you film this, you try not to move your face because uh, that's gonna make it so that uh, the tracking process is super easy. So again, add in a tracker, alt S for the search area, make sure it's big enough, control T to track forwards, beautiful. Um, if this is your first time tracking, perhaps this isn't the tutorial for you, uh, but there's a bunch of buttons over here that make it easy. So you can track frame by frame or the whole thing, whatever. I'm just gonna assume you already know how to track. So. Um, it seems like most of these trackers, I, I, technically all of them so far, have been working out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a couple at the same time, and let's see if these all work. So A to select all these um, trackers, Control T, seems like they all made it, perfect, okay. Uh, so now the theory is we can add all the trackers at the same time, fun, exciting. While I do that, let me tell you a story, since uh, otherwise this will be hella boring. Allergy season, boys. What the fuck is going on with the pollen count? Apparently it's crazy, not just for me. I'm sniffly, my eyes are like uh, tickly, itchy, however you would describe it. People with allergies know it's kind of hard to describe to somebody who doesn't have them. It's kind of like a itchy tickling in your whole essence and you just wanna, just wanna take a shower constantly. Nope, oh, all of those worked. By the way, I left the chin for last since I know it's gonna be problematic. Uh, but yeah, pollen's crazy and uh, I'm not liking it. End of story. Um, okay, tracker, add it here. So the, the issue with the chin is you're gonna see it goes up and down. And in fact, I think it goes off frame a little, uh, but let's see if we can track it. So again, same setup, take it, control T, fine. It only made it 20 frames. Uh, you might need to do some manual adjustment or you know, zoom out of the face a little, you know, GD. Could have planned ahead a little. So what I'm doing is I'm just manually uh, moving these uh, this uh, tracker marker which does uh, add on to the uh, movement, the keyframing. So just until it's ready, and now it's track forwards. Oh, now it's only at frame 62. Hopefully this will resolve itself. You can see this is a uh, blend of uh, manual work and automatic work, but now it's done, wasn't too bad. So now you can see this tracker's working. And we have all our trackers, beautiful tea break time. Part of the whole allergy thing is it messes up with my uh, throat, which is unfortunate given that I make money with my throat. And how many people can say that? Um, well, what's the point? The point is we have trackers. We now need to project this into 3D space like I talked about. We're gonna do some 3D stuff and then UV map uh, finally. So let's uh, do a bit of a save. I'm gonna, by the way, preview for a future tutorial. Oh, 
Um, that this is the one where I'm, I think I'm gonna do a sponsored segment too with this kind of thing going on. But I'm gonna call this one. I have a Patreon because I do link in the description. Get the footage. Get the blend. Um, how do we project this into 3D space? Right now, it's just in the movie clip editor. Right. If we go to the 3D viewports, nothing. Well, how do we do it? Uh, select all the trackers. Re so A to select all them. Uh, reconstruction. Link empties to track. And now you can see, boop, uh, they are there. We don't need the cube. We don't need the light. And by the way, this has always been 30 frames per second. Um, so you can see all our trackers are now uh, moving relative to the camera, which is important. You can position the camera wherever you want. Uh, because of that, let's position it somewhere nicely. I'm going to position it so the camera is looking down at the plane. And therefore, all our empties, which we can scale down just to make them smaller, are going to be there. And you can kind of see the outline of, of bleh, the outline of my face. It almost feels like I'm that Shrek mask, if you catch my drift. Either way, if you want to see it, go to background images, enable them. Um, if we do not already have it, it should be as the movie clip. There you go. Now you can see those empties are uh, following the, uh, the, the situation. Uh, we can use this information, though, to turn this uh, into a mesh. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mesh that's a triangulated version of my face. face, face. And uh, each vertex is going to be following one of these empties. So it's an animated mesh. How do we do this? Uh, well, you start off by adding in a single vert vertex, vertice. Uh, you could either do that by having the extra objects add on, which does that, or just add in a plane. This is easier. Go into edit mode, select everything except for one vertice. So one vertex, control I to invert. Delete those vertices, so now we have a, a single vertex. I'm going to enable snapping. What kind? Well, we're talking about vertices. Vertex, whoops. Vertex snapping. And what that's going to let me do is just immediately go on the empty. So shifty to duplicate. And now I'm adding in uh, vertices for all these things. By the way, if at any point you're like, oh, which ones did I add it for? Just hit A, and then all, they will all be orange. Um, so I'm adding in a vertex on each of these things. I've used this method before, if you remember the deformable tracking video, which when you think about it, are we tracking a deformable surface right now? Yes. So of course it's the same process. Uh, but I'm adding in a bunch of vertices right now so that we can make a mesh out of this super easily. I'm doing this on frame one. So I'm just going to make sure everything's aligned and then we're going to make sure it's trackable or that it moves. You know, like what I'm saying is as we go down the footage, the vertices don't line up. Um, okay. Cool, we have that. Uh, now let's make a mesh. Uh, to do this, select any three vertices. F makes a face. And you can do that again. So this is manual triangulation. I think there is technically a command for this. Like you could run the convex hull. I wouldn't recommend it. It doesn't give very good geometry. Which you're thinking, okay, what does it matter? It matters because of the UV map. So easy geometry is an easy life, happy wife, happy life, happy whatever. Okay. Uh, just triangulate the things. If it takes too long, I'll speed it up. But you know me, Speedy McGee. I will not be needing any of these speed assistees. Ooh, he's entering the rap game now. How many wonder people? I mean, uh, <laughs> for those of you who've been around long enough, you know I've made the diss tracks. Okay, so I'm just triangulating this. Um, ideally, you make it symmetric on both sides, but it's not entirely important. Like in this case, it would be super easy to do so because I made all these dots on my face that I drew on with makeup. Um, that's right. Uh, I made them symmetrically, but whatever. Looks like I'm not doing that. That's fine. So just select the vertices. Almost done. You want to make sure that you've essentially made a convex hull. And there we go. Now we have a mesh uh, that's triangulated. Uh, only issue with this is, again, if we hit play, it doesn't move at all uh, relative to that. So if we can get the vertices to move, then the faces and edges would move, etc. So here's how we do that. Super simple. Uh, what you do is for each vertex, so I'm going back to frame one where everything's lined up. You select the vertex. You control click. You hold control. If you hit hold shift, it's not going to work. If you hold alt, your finger will blow off. So, so hit control. Uh, control click and then control H um, to hook to selected object. What this means is the vertex is going to be hooked. Um, in the sense of a modifier, there's literally a hook uh, modifier. It's going to be hooked to this empty. And you can see it moves with it. Um, and as you might have expected, we need to do this for all of them. So I'm just going to show you how to do this a couple more times, then I'll speed through it. So again, click, control click for the, um, the, the, the empty hook to selected object. Like this, control click, sometimes it's a little hard to select, selected object. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed through this and I will be back once I've hooked the hooks and then I will uh, return. By the way, quick tip here, if you are like not sure how many, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt the flow, but uh, 
if you're not sure how many or which ones you've done, you just go to wireframe and you play it and you're like, oh, this one's not moving. And then you're like, oh, that one I need to crack. Either way, back to the, uh, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I think this is finally the last one. It's a little hard to tell. This is definitely something I should make an add-on for, although I think I did. I need to recover that one. Either way, uh, we have now hooked all the vertices to their empties and now you can see the mesh, which is easier to see in wireframe mode, but whatever. Uh, the mesh is moving with the thing. Again, if you go to wireframe and then you go to the thing, you can actually see now there's this wireframe um, tracking to the face. And the, the way to think about this is whenever we've done tracking, uh, the inverse process is stabilization. So it's kind of in there. Um, all we need to do is kind of use this motion information to add stability instead of motion. Either way, here's how we do it. So uh, once you have this face, face mesh, <laughs> Uh, what you're gonna do is we're now we're gonna nah, we're now gonna make a special material for this. This is a nightmare. Just speaking in general, I don't know how people do it. Um, make a material. What's gonna be in your material? Uh, well, we're gonna actually just project the footage onto the uh, face mask. Um, to do this, I'm gonna load a image texture node since there's no movie clip node. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to re-import that. Uh, no biggie. Just import in the same video or face sequence or whatever from last time connect it to the surface, and um, a couple of things you're gonna need to do to make this visible and not purple, etc. cetera. Um, enable both of these. This is just gonna make sure that the footage doesn't like stop and then doesn't cycle back on itself and whatever. By the way, these numbers should be correct from the get-go. Um, the second thing we need to do is for texture coordinates, we need to be using a special kind of coordinate system. I don't know why I had to, t usually I just have to type in text and it shows up. Either way, uh, we're gonna have to use the windowed coordinate system because what this does is it just projects from the viewport. It's kind of like project from view. I'm looking at it from the camera that's already aligned, so of course it's gonna work. Uh, the issue is if I go to a different view, it doesn't work too well. But uh, from here, it works uh, very well and you can see we've essentially isolated the face. So uh, first part of the material, it's this. I'm gonna call it, again, I have a Patreon. Gotta hammer that point home. Um, so now that we have this isolated, uh, the next step is this UV thing I keep talking about, uh, which is going to add the stability. Long story short, we're going to be using texture baking. Uh, what are we going to be baking? Basically, essentially what we have right here, basically. Um, we're going to be baking that, and that's going to make it uh, stable because it's going to be mapping to the same UV map every time. Uh, either way, what we're going to do is we're going to select all of this, which already does not have a UV map because it's a weird mesh, I think. Uh, we go to the UV editor, you can see, yeah, there's no real UV map here. So just hit U, project from view. So this is just going to make a very basic UV map. Doesn't affect any of this since it's using a windowed coordinates again. Uh, but now if we were to actually use UV coordinates, it's going to look weird, but it will actually kind of work. Um, either way, uh, windowed coordinates uh, for the UV map. What we want to now do is essentially what you have here is what's going to output. So if you want it to be like in a square like I had it, you need to make your UV map a square. So I'm just kind of positioning it so it's roughly in the right area. Um, any vertices that are super close to the edge like this one, I'm going to make them actually on the edge. So the coordinates should be fully one on the Y axis. For this one, it's extending a little past zero. So I'm going to map it back to zero. Uh, this one, X axis, set it to zero. Same with this, and again, all I'm doing here, and you can add in a bit of extra geometry if you want to do this more cleanly, is I'm just taking our stabilized pins, the areas that we were tracking, and I'm saying, okay, uh, these are going to be on the uh, boundaries. Just so that I'm fully taking up the uh, UV space is the idea here. And you can totally move the spots in the middle too, I'm just not messing with it. So 0, 1, perfect. Uh, this one, we can actually enable proportional editing, so it kind of stretches uh, the nearby uh, vertex with it, just so it looks a bit more smoothed out. So 1 by 0. Same thing over here. Stretch it out. Hopefully it makes sense, the whole idea here, the theory of it. Otherwise, you're like, why is he making a square? Um, okay, we have the UV map uh, set up. Uh, now let's try to do a uh, texture bake, and if that works, we'll do our animated bake. By the way, I'm not 100% sure why it's like glitching out like this, or it's purple, but whatever. Um, so we have the setup. Now what we need to do is we need to do the normal baking process. So a couple things. Uh, make sure you're in cycles, which seems to fix a lot of the issues here. Uh, cycles is important because that's what we use for texture baking. You can't bake an EV. Uh, so go to cycles. We need to add in a location to bake to. So in other words, a new image. I'm going to make a, it doesn't have to be that high resolution since again, we're only looking, looking at a portion of the original video, which was 1080p. The face only takes up so much of it. 600 by 600. 
we'll call it output face perfect this is an image um, and for this image we want to make sure that we are using i don't think this is entirely necessary uh, but make sure we're using the uv map we made so in other words we are baking from the footage with the windowed coordinates where everything's perfect and we're baking to this new image with the uh, uv map um, okay, so make sure this is selected, your mesh is selected. We don't actually need that. The, the bigger the number is, the longer it's going to take to bake. So I'd recommend just setting it at one. Um, okay, uh, to actually bake this, you go to the bake panel. And by the way, all this stuff up here, I'll talk about how to get it. This is why we are using 2.93 like I talked about. The pollen's getting to me. Um, make sure the bake type is set to emission. Uh, the margin set to zero. We don't need anything extra on the boundaries. Um, and let's see if that works. So let's try baking. So it's going to bake and let's see what this looks like. Perfect. Just as intended. And again, these vertices that I put in the corner on the edges are the dots, right? Because they are tracked to them. Uh, but you can see here's the, the unwrap of our face. Looks pretty cool. Um, if I was instead to bake on a future frame, so again, what's happening here, I don't know why I'm struggling so much with this. Uh, what's happening here is we're basically doing a transformation from windowed coordinate space to UV space. So if I go to a future frame, my eyes are open. Let's rebake again, make sure everything's selected. Now you can see my eyes are open, etc. I feel like this is offensive. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Um, so now the question is, how do we bake every single image one after another after another without hitting this button and waiting, etc.? Here's the trick. You're going to need the animation bake. I don't know what it's called. You're going to need an add-on. So go to Edit Preferences Add-ons. Uh, look for, if you don't already have it enabled, it's probably called Animation something or other. Here it is. Animated Render Baker. Comes with 2.93 and above, I believe, but definitely with this version of 2.93. Take this and enable it. It's important. Otherwise, you're not going to have these buttons over here. So we're going to enable it. And now uh, we're probably, oh wait, did I not enable it? We're probably going to run into an issue that we'll talk about in a second as well. Okay, so that, there we go. That, that's good. Uh, hopefully it stays that way. Uh, so we are going to be baking from frames 1 to 150, and maybe it will just work. Let's see. Animated bake. No. Save the image that's used for baking. Uh, what you need to do with this animation render baker is basically it's going to output an image sequence because it's baking the first frame, the second frame, etc. Um, therefore, it needs to know where to write to. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to reset this. So a new image. I'm just going to call this output again, 600 by 600 is fine. Uh, but the important step is you go to the output here and you, so in this uh, UV editor or image editor, uh, select the image we made, hit Alt Shift S or just go to um, image save as. So Alt Shift S and then save it somewhere. So I'm going to make a new directory, calling it Patreon, saving it in Patreon, calling it output, which is, I guess, going to output as PNGs, but you can choose what you want that to be. Okay. Um, so in other words, what I've essentially done here is I've made a new directory where it's going to hopefully bake to. Um, so now I'm going to hit the button and hopefully the recording doesn't freeze up because this is a bit intensive. We'll see what happens. So again, uh, we've set it up. You go to bake, animated bake. And assuming that the footage or the recording hasn't frozen up, let's see. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, Basically, it will always look like the program is cr crashing as it does this because it's just going to freeze and lock onto that. Uh, but you can see it's outputted every single frame and it's animated. So I close my eyes for the first second and then everything opens. Um, and you can see it actually outputs very quickly. Um, if you did not uh, lower your sample count before, this would have been a nightmare. But it doesn't take too long. It, it's almost real time, like 30 frames per second. Um, okay. So... Uh, basically now you, you, what you do is you take this, uh, you load it into uh, whatever video editor and you play it as a video. I mean, that's the essence of it. We've extracted the face, by the way, this is a good process. If you want to add a tattoo or something, you add that tattoo here in the stabilized viewport, and then you load it into the material with the UV thing. And it will look like there's a tattoo on your face back in normal, whatever. But either way, that's the essence of the tutorial. I think I'm uh, done talking about it. So hopefully you enjoyed. Um, and now it's time to, for everybody's favorite time of the day, Patreon. Uh, what you're seeing is the credits on the right, which is my left side, of I think almost exactly 800 patrons. I think last time I checked, there were like 790 something. And the question is, are they just very in love with default cube CG matter tutorials? Maybe. Uh, or is there a reason they're all? Either way, uh, they're the reason 
I think that a lot of people have joined Patreon is the uh, features. So this tutorial, you could have watched it early. I do early access to tutorials. Uh, sometimes they're multiple days early. Sometimes they're only a couple hours early, depending on the scheduling and stuff like this. You could watch tutorials early. That's how some people comment before the video even begins. Um, you can, or the video is even uploaded. Uh, you can also get access to um, exclusive tutorials that I only upload to Patreon on either channel. Those are a bit infrequent, but I try to get a couple out every month. I think the most recent one was like advanced lightning using math procedurally. Uh, check that out. Um, additionally, uh, what else is there? There's the blend files, of course, any blend I've ever made. There's hundreds at this point. Pick it up. Patreon newsletter, Discord, stuff like this. So... Yeah, I mean, it's convincing. I'm good at the Patreon ad at the end. Either way, I do it because this is like something that directly benefits me and lets me continue both of these channels and people get stuff in return. So I think it makes sense. Either way, uh, thank you to all 800 some patrons. Hopefully you learned something in this tutorial about how to make a cursed face. And uh, yeah.